Welcome to Convocation. We start every academic year by inviting our seniors as well as our master's students to gather and reflect with purpose on this important last year for some and first and last year for others. Ritual is really an important way to separate this moment from everyday life. So we dress up and we process into this formal space with faculty and with esteemed guests. The, chapel off, the chaplain offers an invocation and there is even a picnic. Yes, it's that important. Today, in the spirit of convocation, I wanna devote my opening remarks to some advice for the coming year. Convocation is also part of a pairing with baccalaureate during commencement weekend. So in June, I'll come back and I'll see whether or not you took my advice. You don't have to take notes today, but there will be a test. It's called the rest of your life and accounts for 100% of your grade. <laughs> so my advice is really inspired by some things that I told my own son last year who was entering his senior year of college. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you today, I thought, well, if it's good enough for my own son, I probably could share it around a bit. So here it is. First of all, this year is your chance. You've been here long enough to know your way around. You're still young enough to explore intellectually. Make the most of this unique challenge and combination. They say that education is wasted on the young. I want, really want you to prove them wrong. Second, this is your time. Yes, you need to think about what's next. Certainly, you should network and work on your resumes and apply for jobs or graduate school. You obviously need to do all of those things. But I really hope you take opportunity to have fun and to make this your very best year. Third, you've got the tools to do both of these things. Between your own intelligence and your life experience and everything you've learned here and before here, plus the support of your personal community and this Williams community, you are exceptionally well-equipped to explore all of the opportunities in front of you to find fulfillment and to have a good life. So your chance, your time, and the skills to make and take advantage of both. And I'm gonna build out on each of these just briefly in my comments today. First, the idea that this is your chance. Most of you carefully followed a defined path to get to this point in your life. But the future ahead of you probably looks a little less like a very well-trodden trail and more like a wide open field. There are lots of ways of responding to that breath of opportunity and openness. Frankly, some people freak out. That's always an option, I've been there. You can also follow a trail blazed by someone else, or you can make your own way. You can meticulously map out a route, or you can plunge ahead and trust that everything will be okay. Any of these are perfectly fine options, although I'd recommend not panicking if you can. Um, but one thing you might do is think about the folks who came before you. So we're celebrating our 50th year of women at Williams this year, and maybe it helps to think of the experience 50 years ago or of any other people who have preceded you for whom coming to Williams was itself a gamble. The way to move into the future is by taking a step and putting one foot in front of the other. That's the way they did it too. But you don't have to have the rest of your life mapped up now, and that is the main point. Just do something that seems worthwhile now. As you face that wide open field in front of you, your future, remember, you're not out there yet. You are right here. And while you're here, why not take the chance, even now, to do something new? Sign up for a course outside of your major. Explore a topic that you are deeply curious about but haven't had the chance to educate yourself about yet. Do something just a little intellectually unusual for you. I can't tell you how many alumni I meet who tell me that their favorite class at Williams was a class that they took 
outside of their major and something they didn't know they wanted to do before they got here. And that was certainly true for me. I was an English major in college. I took art history. I took constitutional law. And these are some of the classes, which is not to say my major didn't shape me, but these are some of the classes that left enduring marks on literally how I see the art history class, um, how I think about the ethical choices of our society, constitutional law. I urge you, I hope you've done that already, and I hope you, you use this last year not to think, well, I'm done, but what can I do new? What is fresh? How can I ask new questions? Where can I lean in? And this brings me to my second idea. This year is also your time. Yes, time is precious, but there's more of it than you think. So find time for joy this year, along with that intellectual uh, exploration. Your joy might be dancing and singing, it could be hiking alone or cooking with friends, playing video games or playing music. It's up to you, but ask yourself what makes you happy and have some fun with this. This is every bit as important as the intellectual exploration. In fact, I believe it makes the intellectual exploration go deeper if you're coupling it with living a good life. And so even if you're focused on your future, make sure to enjoy the now and take that time. Third, and finally, whenever it feels, whether it sometimes feels like it or not, you've got this. Whether it's the courses you take or the co-curriculars that you explore or the jobs or grad schools you're pursuing, you've got the skills to take advantage of this opportunity. It's just about making choices. Right now, some of your choices may seem overwhelming, but having choices is one of actually the great privileges of living in a free society. What you wanna do is spend your energy on making the right choices. And there are the kind that matter, and of course there are the kind that don't matter. I think of standing in the aisle of the supermarket looking at the array of cereal boxes and not being able to choose which one you want. Or the Oreos. Flavored Oreos, really? <laughs> So you know that people in Stop and Shop who are just standing and staring at all the cookies and cereal boxes, you've seen them there, and you too have done that in your time. But happily, your path to and through Williams has taught you to discern the choices in life that have value and the ones that don't. This is one of the great lessons of the liberal arts, going back to classical times. It actually doesn't matter what your major is. You've got skills that you've learned in reading and in researching and analyzing and communicating. You've got experience exploring and studying, maybe failing at something, but then regrouping and trying harder or coming up with a new angle of approach. Going even deeper, you've spent time thinking about what matters in the world. What does it mean to live a good life? What responsibility do we have individually and collectively for the world around us? What role do relationships play in that work? How can joy and pleasure coexist with duty? The rest of your life isn't a choice between Cocoa Puffs and Count Chocula. You've learned this at Williams in a way that builds on what we've, you've learned from family members and friends and past teachers and past mentors. And actually, I just want to pause there for a moment to say that's one of the reasons we celebrate great teaching at Williams by asking you, the senior class, to nominate your favorite high school teachers for the Olmsted Award. You're going to see a call for this in the weeks ahead. Um, and it's going to ask you to think back to your uh, time in high school and nominate a teacher who was influential to you and who we can honor at Williams. And I hope you'll give that nomination some thought and bring forward some names uh, who we can celebrate um, at your commencement. In short, the next step in your life isn't your first. It's just one more step on a path you've already been traveling and one which you're well equipped to continue no matter which direction you choose. And so I really say this at the beginning of your senior year to take some of the pressure off. This, is, this end of the journey at Williams, the first day to the last year essentially at Williams, is not the first step to the rest of your life, no, nor will being ending William, your time at Williams be the first step to the end of your life. It's just the next step the next step on your journey. So in sum, use this year to take a step intellectually, stretch yourselves, use it to enjoy yourselves and find fulfillment however you do. 
And remember, when you finally walk across the commencement stage into a new phase of your life, you'll have the skills and the insights you'll need to thrive wherever you go next. Not to mention the support of friends and mentors and a whole Williams alumni community. Your path has brought you this far, and now you're on the verge of something new. It can be daunting to face that open future, but it really can also be wonderful. So I hope you're gonna make this your chance, your time, and most of all, make it your very best life. And I'll just end with one last piece of advice while you're doing these things, which is that if the future is yours to claim, and I believe it is, it's also yours to give. So be generous. While you make the most of your opportunities, please make room for others to do the same. And please also help them live their very best lives too. Thank you.